This video is brought to you as a free public service courtesy of a three-year collaboration between Armory Center for the Arts and Pasadena Unified School District. Made possible by a grant from the U.S. Department of Education with additional support from the Clarence E. Heller Charitable Foundation. Artful Connections with Math has been formally evaluated by CREST, the National Center for Research on Evaluation, Standards, and Student Testing at the University of California, Los Angeles. For more Artful Connections with Math video lessons, or to learn more about professional development opportunities through Armory Center for the Arts, visit armoryarts.org math. Thank you. Welcome to Artful Connections with Math. Polygon stencil watercolor painting. How can we combine and divide shapes to create new shapes? This lesson's goal is for students to use pattern blocks to create overlapping designs of repeated polygons. Over the course of this lesson, your second grade students will be able to differentiate between polygons based on specific attributes, combine and divide polygons into other polygons in order to create a repeated and balanced pattern, use basic stenciling and watercolor techniques, and use overlapping and repetition in their artwork in order to achieve balanced compositions. This lesson addresses a number of common course standards for mathematics, as well as visual arts content standards. Visit armoryarts.org ps1 to download a PDF of this entire lesson plan that outlines the standards address, plus key vocabulary words, rubrics, and ideas for accommodations, variations, and extensions not covered in this video. For this lesson, you'll need pattern blocks, colored pencils, tissue paper, glue, watercolor paper, paintbrushes, water cups, and scissors. Before we dive into session one, let's review some key math concepts. First, let's talk about shape attributes. Remember, the name of a shape is less about a specific form and more about the attributes. For instance, a rhombus is usually identified as looking like the blue pattern block. However, there are other formations that can represent a rhombus based on the attributes. Begin by teaching your students how to trace an object. Using pattern blocks of triangles, squares, trapezoids, rhombuses, parallelograms, and hexagons, ask your students to do the following. Trace each shape in their journals. Write the name of each shape next to the traced image. Count the sides of each shape label each side and put a notch on each side, and count the vertices of the shape and label. Discuss the attributes of a pentagon. This can be created from a triangle pattern block with a square. Discuss the attributes of a rectangle. This can be created from multiple square pattern blocks, or you can cut a piece of 8.5 by 11 paper to demonstrate that two right triangles make a rectangle. Now. Have your students explore the concept of how shapes can be divided up into new shapes. They'll do this by drawing seven hexagons in their journal by tracing different combinations of triangle, rhombus, and trapezoid pattern blocks. Begin by demonstrating that a hexagon can be drawn by simply tracing a hexagon pattern block. Then, explain to your students that they can also make a hexagon by using other shapes. Pick one example shape, in this case a triangle, and ask your students, how many triangles will it take to cover the hexagon? Then, using triangle, rhombus, and trapezoid pattern blocks, instruct your students to find all seven ways to create a hexagon using different combinations of these pattern blocks. Now, ask your students to find both ways to create a trapezoid using more than one block. Finally, ask students to find a way to create a rhombus using more than one pattern block. Finished? Ask your students questions like, what were some of your strategies for finding shapes? How did you make sure your solutions were all different? What helped you decide that you had found all the possible combinations? Why didn't you use the orange square and the tan parallelogram? One or two of the following extensions can be employed in your classroom to deepen the lesson. Have students create an equilateral triangle out of three units, or a bigger rhombus or a bigger trapezoid. Give students a certain amount of shapes, for example, four triangles, and ask them what shapes can be made with them. Before we begin, let's access prior knowledge. Ask your students questions like, what geometric shapes do you know? 
What polygons can be combined to form other polygons? What is an organic shape, and how does it differ from a geometric shape or a polygon? You can also hold up pattern blocks and ask students to name each one. Divide students into pairs or groups of three or four. Give each group five triangles, one square, and one parallelogram. Ask each group to work together to find different ways to construct shapes using different amounts of pattern blocks. Have students record their findings in their journal. Next, let's take a look at the artwork of Terry Winters included in this lesson plan and see how it connects with the concept of shape, pattern, and balance. Visit armoryarts.org PS1 to download a PDF version of this lesson plan, which includes biographical information about Winters, as well as images of his artwork. Ask your students the following questions. What do you see? What polygons do you recognize? Where do you see shapes repeated? What colors appear closer and further away? What kind of patterns do you see? What do you think the artist did first when he made this work? How do you think Terry Winters created balance in this painting? Where do you imagine the artist got his idea for this painting? What could you take from this artwork and use in your own artwork next week? Have students place colored pieces of tissue paper on a large piece of watercolor paper and paint over it with water. After allowing the tissue paper to dry, instruct students to peel off the tissue paper to reveal the bleeding watercolor effect that will produce interesting organic shapes. This will become the background of the painting they will produce in the next session. Just before session one ends, ask your students, what did you learn when creating new polygons out of different pattern blocks? What did you discover about working with the tissue paper in this way? What did you learn about color blending? We're almost ready to finish our polygon stencil watercolor painting, but first, let's review what we did last session. Ask your students, how would you describe a polygon? What do you remember about creating polygons? And what can we say about pattern and balance when looking at Terry Winter's paintings? Now, on to the painting. Let's begin by demonstrating how to trace around a polygon using a colored pencil. Model how students should approach using the space on their watercolor background from the prior session. Ask your students to think about how they will arrange the geometric shapes on their painting. Give each student a hexagon, square, rhombus, parallelogram, trapezoid, and triangle pattern block. Have them trace each pattern block to fill in the paper, overlapping their shapes onto the organic watercolor. Model the thought process of planning out a balanced use of space on the page. Tell your students they will need to show more than one way to make different shapes, just like they did in the hexagon tracing exercise from the pre-session math lesson. Have your students create a color key in their journals, assigning specific colored pencils to each pattern block shape. Finally, they can trace their pattern block shapes in the assigned colors onto the watercolor paper. They should be able to show more than one way to make most of the shapes. The day after session two, review what everyone has learned. Divide the class into pairs or groups of three or four, then write these questions on the board. What polygons do you recognize in one of your classmates' artworks? How does your work show repetition and balance? What happened when you overlapped different colors in your painting? What did you see in the Terry Winters images that influenced you? What did you want to create in your artwork? How did you succeed? What title would you give to your artwork? If you could do this project again, what would you do differently? Let's reflect on the math concepts covered in this lesson too. Ask your students to describe the difference between plane and solid shapes. Why is it important to know the attributes of a shape? Can you look at real objects and see the geometrical shapes that helped build them? And finally, describe and draw something in the room that is made up of more than two shapes. Thanks for joining us today. To download a PDF of this complete lesson plan, visit armoryarts.org PS1. To make more artful connections with math, visit armoryarts.org slash math. Thank you.